Have you ever noticed that Intel has more processors than Thinkorswim has useless indicators? Most of them sound exactly the same. i3, i5, i7, KF this, HX that, say what? So if you've ever looked at computer specs and felt like you're reading ancient hieroglyphics, this video is for you. I'm breaking down every Intel chip in a way even a brand new trader can understand. And trust me, the differences matter way more than you think. Before we get into all the specifics, you need to understand something that almost no trader knows. Forget those marketing names. Forget the gigahertz and the quark counts and the turbo speeds. None of that tells you the truth about how fast a processor really is for trading. The only number that actually matters is something called the benchmark score. That's the CPU's horsepower. That's the torque. That's the number that determines whether your CPU handles the fire hose of real-time market data or whether it folds like a cheap lawn chair the moment volatility kicks in. If your benchmark score is below 45,000, I don't care what trading platform you use. You're going to deal with lag, chart stutter, delayed fills, and that split-second hesitation that costs you real money. 45,000 is now the absolute bare minimum if you're trading with real money. Anything lower and your hardware becomes the weakest link in your trading strategy. And if you want to test any processor, yours, the one you're thinking about buying, or some random chip from 15 years ago, go to easytradingcomputers.net forward slash CPU. Follow the instructions on that page and you can pull the benchmark scores for basically every processor made in the last two decades. Compare them, evaluate them, and instantly know if your chip is strong enough for real-time trading or if it belongs in the garbage. Now let's work our way through Intel's complete lineup from the bottom up. First up, we have the Celeron. The benchmark score on this processor is so low, it shouldn't even be allowed in the building. This thing is for checking email, maybe watching a video, and that's it. Try loading multiple charts or running a level two window, and you'll be looking at a frozen screen wondering why you ever trusted a $200 laptop with your financial future. Next up, the Pentium. Slightly better benchmark score, but we're still nowhere near the territory a trader needs to be. You can read some news, you can browse charts on Google Finance, but that's about the limit. The second the market starts moving, Pentium taps out. It's training wheels hardware. Now let's talk about the Intel Core i3. And I'm gonna be straight with you. This is not a real trading processor. i3 is like showing up to a prop firm evaluation with a $500 account and a flip phone. It technically turns on, it technically loads a chart, but the moment you try to do anything beyond beginner level stuff, it folds instantly. Sure, you can open TradingView and glance at a chart or two, but try running multiple platforms, scanners, the dome, level two, or even two monitors, and you're gonna watch this thing melt. An i3 simply doesn't have the horsepower for real-time day trading. It's barely acceptable for casual swing trading, and even then you're pushing it. Traders putting real money on the line should never be anywhere near an i3-powered machine. Now let's move up to the Intel Core i5. And listen, an i5 sounds like it should be fine for trading, but here's a truth that nobody tells you. Anything before the 13th generation i5 is still way too weak for real-time day trading. Older i5 chips just don't hit that benchmark score you need. They were great for office work and web browsing, maybe some light charting, but throw multiple monitors in, live data feeds or scanning tools, and they choke hard. A 13th generation i5 is the first time the i5 lineup finally became trader capable. And even then, it's only for lighter setups or traders running a minimalistic workflow. And if you're trying to run multiple platforms, multiple screens, or anything algorithmic, you're gonna hit some bottlenecks fast. So yes, i5 is better, but unless it's 14th generation or newer, it's still not enough for serious trading. Now, when we step up to the Intel Core i7 14,700, this is the first Intel chip that finally sneaks past our minimum benchmark requirement. The i7 14,700 pulls a benchmark score of 47,211, which means it's officially above that 45,000 line, and that's what you need for real-time trading. 
So yes, this is the first traditional Intel chip that can actually handle multiple charts, multiple feeds, multiple platforms, and real volatility without the whole machine having a panic attack. But here's the thing, even though the 14,700 clears the bar, Intel's brand new Ultra 7 higher end lineup blows past it with way more headroom, better stability under load, and significantly better real-time performance. If you want power that's built for the trading environment today, not two generations ago, the new Ultra 7 265 chips are where the real story begins. When we talk Ultra 7, understand something. Not all Ultra 7 chips are created equal. I'm only talking about the top models here. And on the desktop side, we're talking about the Ultra 7 265K. This is Intel's newest CPU and the fastest one in the Ultra 7 lineup. And it's hit a benchmark score high enough to keep your trading smooth, responsive, and lag three. The Ultra 7 265K processor absolutely rocks. It gives you enough horsepower for four, six, or even eight monitors, multiple charting platforms, real-time data streams, and scanners without falling apart. And if you want the sweet spot between price and real trader-grade performance, the newest Ultra 7 265K lineup is where you wanna be. Now, before we get into the Ultra 9 heavyweights, and these are the ones with the insane benchmarks numbers, if you're unsure which setup you need, desktop or laptop, cooling, wattage, graphics, everything, grab my complete guide to trading computers. It's linked below. It explains all this stuff in plain English and saves you a ton of money by pointing you to the right hardware and the right benchmark range for your trading style. Awesome, now let's talk about the Intel Core Ultra 9, because this is where Intel finally gets serious. Again, we're only talking about the top models, and on the desktop, that's the Ultra 9 285K, and on the laptop, it's the Ultra 9 275HX. These chips produce benchmark scores so high, they make everyday consumer CPUs look like children's toys. The Ultra 9 285K and 275HX processors are what I recommend for traders that are running 8 to 12 monitors, multiple broker platforms, heavy duty scanners, the dome, order flow tools, AI scanners, time and sales, backtesting software, and sometimes all of this stuff at the same time. These processors maintain stable performance in extremely high load environments. They're built for the kind of real-time multitasking that traders do all day. So here's the big takeaway. If your benchmark score doesn't hit 45,000, your machine is slowing you down. It's affecting your fills, your executions, your reaction time, all of it. And you can test any processor at easytradingcomputers.net forward slash CPU. And I put a link to this page in the description. If your score is under that 45,000, don't trade on it. And if you want the fastest Intel-based trading computer on the planet for 2026, the one built specifically for traders with insane benchmark performance, check out the Chart Breaker from Easy Trading Computers at the special link below. It's powerful, it's totally optimized for trading, and it's engineered to remove every single bottleneck from the system so you never lose a trade because your computer hesitated. Do yourself a favor. Grab the complete guide to trading computers, or if you know you're ready to upgrade, check out that chart breaker at the special price on the link below. And don't forget to hammer that subscribe button so you never miss another tech breakdown from me. And as I always say, may the trend be with you. And now watch this video about laptop processors for trading next. Check it out.